Welcome back to the Lovely Cycling Podcast. Today we'll do a Tour de France GC preview. We'll discuss every important mountain stage, mountain top finish, also a couple stage and some time trials together with Jan Aichka and me, Cycling Graphs. And yeah, Aichka did every watts per kilo calculation possible for the mountains. And yeah, we'll discuss in this video. The stage one will be already a time trial in Copenhagen, 13 kilometers long, very technical. Yeah, it might affect GC riders. Yeah, someone might crash, someone might lose a lot of time. And it will be interesting to see who will be better, Pogacar or Roglic in time trial. Because I think uh, Roglic is a bigger favorite than Pogacar in this time trial. Also to Bookies, I think, yes, according. Yes. I think Roglic will easily gain a few seconds on Pogacar here. Pogacar, I rate him higher for the for the like three, third week or TTs maybe. But unlike completely flat first week, I think it's Roglic easily. He's his CDA is way better. His yeah. equipment is probably better. But it's very I think technical. he's going to get like... Yeah, but Pogacar is also not great in the turn. Both won't risk it too much, so they well, won't fight for the stage win in the end. Probably a top 10. I think Pogacar will gain five seconds of Pogacar. Yeah, probably. But the problem is that Pogacar will take it easily, but Roglic might uh, do this. He's hot to say. <laughs> No risk, no glory thing, and fucking crash out on stage one. Okay, stage two, it will be a flat stage, and everyone is waiting for the bridge where it might be a uh, crosswinds or maybe on the coast. Yeah, because there's also a coast where a possible cost. Yeah, I think I looked at the uh, at, uh, weather forecast, and it's kind of likely that the uh, crosswind section will be before the bridge. So, yeah, you'll make or the splits, if there will be splits, will be made before the bridge, according to the weather forecast. And yeah, this is where I think Jumbo really need to try because they have <laughs> probably the greatest ruler squad ever brought to a Grand Tour. Like Van Hoydonk, Benoit, Van Aert, Roglic, Laporte. That's just a mental right. team for, yeah. for the crosswinds. And Pogaccia has no one. And I hope this time uh, Van Aert will sacrifice his chance like 100%. Yeah. For fun because stage in 2020, win. he didn't. Yeah. When he won that crosswind stage, yeah. Uh, if Van Aert could have, would have pulled, and Rock with you also, he didn't pull. They could have put, put probably more more time into Pogaccia and won the TDF that day. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. They the won't make the same mistake this time. <laughs> yeah, the problem is that uh, if Pogacar would be in Roglic's Rog place, he would al al always pull. Yeah, Pogacar is yeah, really yeah. active, and his team is really shit, so... He must just sit on Roglic wheels, probably, yeah, or behind one art. <laughs> but, yeah. Like I don't, I don't think Roglic understands cycling at all. So yeah, that's why he didn't doesn't pull usually or in bad spots. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the team needs to really tell him everything. I think. I also think this, like the first few, the first week is really the problem for Wingard. I, I don't think he's good in the first TT. I think he could lose like 20, 30 seconds to the Slovenes and. 58 kilogram, he might struggle in the crosswinds as well. But he's from Den Denmark. That there are yeah, he, he probably he probably knows all the roads. Yeah, for for example, yeah. like, there's also Nairo Quintana who is really light and maybe the best crossing yeah. rider in the world. He's he is always making <laughs> he splits. Is, he is like he's he he's absolutely easily the best GC rider. Also, Sergio Guita, also in Paris Nice. I remember in one year he was in this yeah. first group. Okay. There are possible crossings also on other stages, but yeah, this is the stage where everyone will wait for crossings. It's really exposed, so you don't need the strongest wind to create splits on this. I also think like Ben O'Connor, Vlasov, and Martinez and Mass also will probably struggle on this on these kind of stages because uh, I don't really rate them in the in the crosswinds. Might yeah. also be a chance for Thomas to gain some time already to yeah get a top five or a podium maybe. But at least Martinez is in Ineos, yeah, who, who yeah, can ride in yeah. crosswinds. At least they yeah, have so Lokro, who is washed, but he can ride in crosswinds. Okay, the next <laughs> important stage is stage five, the couple stage, but there won't be any like five star sectors. Yeah, but the most interesting sector, I think, is second sector, which is a downhill. Like, I think they will go with, there with 70 kilometers per hour and yeah, Jan Boisman must go all out in this stage. And I don't know if they need to go all out. Yeah, I mean, I think they should run the 70 km per like, down section, be at the front and hope Pogacar punctures, but or if crash, that doesn't happen, crashes. I don't think you... 
Yeah, of course. But I don't think if that doesn't happen, I don't think you should push too hard because, yeah, it would be kind of <laughs> shit if you don't drop Pogacar but fuck up yeah. Wingy before the mountains. Yeah. Okay, they are, they must just like ride it at the front to to be safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah to keep Roglic safe yeah. and Wingard also. Yeah, yeah, and Wingard as well, of course. Yeah, yeah, uh, but... yeah. I also want to see how how the Pirelli and Continental equipment of Pogaccia holds up on this stage. But yeah, overall, if it's I don't think if it's if it's not wet, if it's not rainy, I don't think anything big will happen. Maybe one of the contenders will lose time, but overall, not much. Yeah, usually in couple staging Grand Tours, there aren't big changes in GC. Yeah, yeah only people... only in 2014 when it was like big rain. Or when uh, Richie Port crashed out, I think it was stage nine. <laughs> yeah. also. but that, that, that doesn't count. He always yeah, crashed in stage, stage nine. Was... <laughs> there wasn't even other cobbles. There was even before the oh. cobbles. <laughs> yes, it's, it's classic Richie. Okay, then the yeah. next one is important stage, stage seven, which is the first real mountain top finish on Super La Plange de Belfi, which they last used in 2019, where who was the first, I think, Garen Thomas from GC Group. Yeah, Garen Thomas. And Dylan Toons won from the breakaway, and Gillo Chicano was second, and he took the yellow jersey, so probably also breakaway will win this time, and someone must lose time. This is first week, easy stage. I think they'll do big, big rewards on this. Yeah, and what, what are your watts per kilo predictions on this climb? I have, yeah, 6.6, 6.7, and 6.8 are the ones I have. I think they're probably going to go around 6.7, but if Jumbo pays, they could go 6.8. I think the Slovenes could go 6.8 on a good day for 19 minutes 17. Yeah. I think, yeah, but Rob Jumbo will probably not pace because I don't think this climb suits Vingegaard well. So, yeah, and you can't really drop Pogaccia on this, so I don't think it's really worth it. I think, actually, who should pace this stage is Bora. I think they should pace for the stage one with last off. It's a 19 minute climb, 20 minute it's climb. It's 19 minutes. It's, it's the same climb as, as Mike Mato de Mike Matibi. Yeah. It's, it's legit the same climb. It's like one minute longer around that and also gravel section. I think you can win the stage if the Slovens look at each other or yeah, or he just has a good kick because yeah. he is pretty fast. I see in 2019, Garrett Thomas did the 6.49 watts per kilo to 20 minutes, two seconds. That was clean. And that was still a, that was still a big group. Yeah. You know, Alaphilippe lost two seconds only. Yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't big gaps. Probably also yeah. this time won't be big gaps. Everyone will be fresh. Yeah. And also, like the easy. gravel, the gravel might lead to uh, problems with mechanicals, though. I could see that because I think Barde had a mechanical in 2019. Okay, it was on any back spike, so that has to be considered. But it's still possible to get uh, uh, mechanicals on that section. Yeah, but while which... they're approved, you, you, you can still like <laughs> manage yeah, the like, last. Yeah, I feel like it also depends on like the tires, I guess, because they're like tubeless now. Uh, where yeah, the mechanical doesn't matter as much, or if you're tires broken i guess okay the next stage is stage 11 which might be actually the queen stage the most hardest stage which will finish on col du granon yeah this stage looks really crazy yeah this is really really hard stage with the galibier via telegraph first oh well we have a flat section before but then the a Telegraph and then Galibier. I think they can break the record pretty easily, which belongs to Juan Mauricio Soler from, I think, 20, 2008. But it's not super high watts per kilogram. If Jumbo pays, which I believe they should, to put Pogaccia under pressure, they will break the record pretty comfortably. Yeah, like I see, Galibier is really steep at the last seven yeah. kilometers. Yeah, yeah. So there are yeah, like the last... 9% sections even, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think the last seven kilometers are like seven, seven point five percent maybe, and then even steeper. Even oh it, yeah, it's, okay. it's over eight percent. Okay, so. yeah. So I and think it... Jumbo Jumbo should probably like slow pace on the lower section and then do a big neg negative split and pace hard on the Galibier and maybe even maybe even attack with Roglic or Vingegaard already and have if you have yeah. a satellite rider. Yeah, like it. I would do that if if at that day. 
the temperature is like 30 degrees, like it, it's hot. Yeah, because Pogacar might struggle in the yeah, hot the, weather. The, if like on hot in hot weather, if there's high kilojoule hard stage before, I think Pogacar really struggles. If it's an easy stage, he's still fine. But on a hard stage and hot conditions, I think he struggles. You could try to go for a satellite rider in the valley because if you have like one rider with Van Art, a satellite ahead, you could gain big time before the Clano already. Yeah, like they can send even like Stan Cruz like or Sapkus. They have multiple options. Yeah, but yeah. for the valley, yeah, but not. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, like maybe even not on Van Hoydon. I think you can get over Galibi in the break somewhat. Maybe, yeah. Uh, like the steep section is uh, is already at two thousand meters above sea level. Yeah, so... that's also and that's Pog also a big part. Yeah, the altitude. And Pogacar cracked at uh, Mount Mantu, which isn't even that high. Yeah, he, he cracked at 1,800 meters, something like that, even lower, I think. Yeah. And yeah, this Galibia is uh, up to 2,640 or something yeah. meters. So it's really, really high and a hard, very hard climb from this side. The other side from Galibia is not as hard, but this one really hard. Yeah, but to crack Pogacar, you can't uh, pay steady because Wingard yeah. attacked and he did like a big watts per kilo for like five, ten minutes and cracked. Like Yeah, like, even like they like, did, they like to... Oh. They've paced pretty slow the first part of Vaughn 2. And then once they reached uh, the Chateau Lenard, they got a bit higher. And then Wingard maybe did like 6.8 watts per kilogram or something in the last five minutes. And Craig Pogaccia, because Pogaccia lost like from the moment of dropping, it was like three minutes to the top and he lost 40 seconds. Like yeah. that's just so if, much yeah if he loses that on uh, Galibier then the next climb is called the Granon which is 12 <laughs> it's done, man. <laughs> <laughs> like Granon I think is probably the hardest climb we have seen for a long time in the tour because it it's 9.2 percent at yeah 9.2 percent over 11 kilometers and it goes up yeah. to 2400 meters of altitude it's just crazy hard yeah, the problem it was last used in the clean era, with where I think Greg Reglamon. The uh, era. <laughs> okay, yeah. Where Greg Reglamon, Bernard Ino was the favorites of Tour de France. And I think the, the who was the record holder of this climb? It was Urs uh, Zimmermann. Yeah. Urs Zimmermann and Greg Lamont. Okay, how they, many watts per kilo they did? Uh, yeah, they didn't do that many watts per kilogram. I think Urs Zimmermann, he pulled for the climb, so 5.5 watts per kilogram, and then Greg LeMond did 5.48 and took the yellow jersey for the first time on the stage because Bernard Eno cracked and lost lost a few minutes. So, yeah, it has been only used once uh, before, but even then it proved already... Uh, I uh, see your predictions are for like... Your predictions are like... They will do five minutes or six minutes faster than Le Mans. Yeah, like Le Mans time is not not really not fast. I mean, they of course also were on like ten kilogram bikes, but back in the day, they brought per kilogram were not high. Until nineteen ninety, it's nothing, nothing serious. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's yeah. It's, I think they can do six point two, really, if they don't go completely crazy on Galibi before. I think also Broccoli should drop Pogaccia here. Like 6.0 is still like crazy because it's above <laughs> like two, it finished 2,400 meters above sea level. It's, it's never really underestimate, high. never underestimate the Slovenians. Yeah, it would be un unbelievable. Like, I think, I think Roglic and Wingiga can both drop Pogaccia here. I hope that stage will be like 40 degrees, not like 15 <laughs> degrees and rain. Imagine it's, it's yeah. rain. Yeah, if it, if it rains, that's that's not that's a really big advantage to Pogaccia. Because I think Roglic also struggles in the rain. I don't think Vingegaard likes the rain either. And Pogaccia yeah. is really, really good in the rain. Yeah, like I checked, Vingegaard always underperforms in the rainy conditions or cold conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And the Roglic sucks in rain, really, because he can't <laughs> he can try it on a bike. I think I think the rain isn't the problem. I think it's just it's cold for him. Mm, yeah, because 
it's also hard we, hard to yeah uh, to to a jacket wear wear a jacket yeah yeah I don't think he understands when to wear a jacket and when not because I think in the Vuelta stage seventeen to Lagos it also rained and he yeah. did like completely mute performance but I think that that wasn't that cold so I think the cold was the problem for him yeah which okay. should not happen yeah. realistically in 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 July. Okay, the stage after Cold Granone is also really hard. It will finish on <laughs> Alpduez. It's a multiple mountain yeah, stage. And yeah, <laughs> if Pogacar cracks on Granone or, or Galibier, then uh, yeah, Alpduez <laughs> also <laughs> won't be easy. <laughs> yeah, this is like a crazy double head of stages with Granone, Granone stage and then the Alp, Alpduez stage, which is like three HC climbs again, Galibier, Cold de fell, and then Alpes, of course, in the end, and yeah, with those two HC climbs, the Kilijou will be high before the climb already. And yeah, I think at this point, Brogic will be like forty-five seconds maybe ahead of already. Mm-hmm, it's maybe. what I personally think because yeah, I think he can take a few seconds on like bonus seconds in the first week and then drop Pogaccia by a bit on Granon and the yeah. TT as well. So yeah. Pogacha might ride offensively here, which could could end up costing him as well because Jumbo's dream is really good and the drafting benefits still exist. Yeah, on like only 8%. 8%. But the problem for yeah, like, Pogacar is his team is shit and they can't set up an attack for him. Like, yeah, like even if Pogacha wants to attack, Poga- Micah can't set a high pace, a high enough yeah. pace to completely. Yeah, set up an attack by completely fucking the uh, Jumbo riders. Yeah, the perfect so, scenario for Jumbo will be if Pogacar attacks and Jumbo <laughs> just uses a train with Kreuz, yeah. like Sepp Kuss, just and, do, uh, just, just do the spaces it. back like, like Sky. Like Sky. Yeah, yeah, there, there's a reason why Sky was so dominant because the train tactic just is really, really good if you have such a strong team and the other uh, the opponents don't uh, don't aren't strong or don't have a strong enough team to set them up properly, which is basically the situation with Pogacar at the moment. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I don't think I don't think Micah can drop Kreuzberg and Kass unless they're on a bad day. Yeah, I imagine if Kreuzberg is on the Grand Dauphin stage eight form. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was that was a mental performance from Kreuzberg. Yeah, and this climb is like Okay, Pantani record is 36 minutes, 40 seconds, 6.8 watts per kilo. They, <laughs> they might do it. Like Quintana did it in 39 minutes, 22 seconds in 2015. So they might do it in 38 minutes, maybe, if they pace it. I hard. think they can get close to 38 minutes, uh, yeah. Pogaccia and Roglic. Uh, it will be mental because the last time when in the r- r- road stage they went faster than 38 minutes was in 1997 <laughs> and only yeah. and Ulrich did it yeah I think I don't think they will get just I think they'll do like a 38 80 uh, 30 38 30 because yeah. the stage before is really hard and also it's it, like the previous day is really hard they're called yeah. no and yeah. there damn yeah, like it's, these and it's it's only like stage 12 <laughs> yeah like so this, is, week. this is a really hard tour de france route overall like the mountain top finishes are like long really hard stages beforehand as well like this year the tour will be decided on like 35 to 40 minute climbs not on 20 minute climbs like the last few tfs which i think is a an advantage for brock which because i think pogacha struggles a bit on on the longer climbs, or isn't as good as Roglic and Vingegaard? Yeah, okay, his his odds are fine, yeah, but he isn't as dominant. Okay, the next important stage is stage 14, which will finish on the nine nine minute climb, what's per kilo test, which is Monde. Yeah, that's how you pronounce. Yeah, yeah Monde. Uh, this climb is pretty famous. Um, uh, it's really steep, ten to uh, nine to ten minutes. Uh, the stage before is easy. It probably will be won by a break. Uh, yeah, I think Jumbo should pace this for Roglic because he is insane on these steep, steep gradients. Like in 2018, when he wasn't the same same dominant rider he is now, we won nine minutes ten on this climb, which is it was the fastest time since. 1996 where no it was 
since 1995 and in 1995 oh, yeah. they went seven seconds faster and it was Pantani and Dindran and Bjorn Rees. 60 60 <laughs> percent <Yeah>. guys 60 <laughs> percent yeah and I think I think Roglic can beat this record yeah. like 2019 he went he went seven seconds slower than the record or yeah. yeah seven seconds slower he's way better right now yeah yeah I think he can put he can he can Break that record, maybe put Pogaccio on a few seconds. It won't be big, but could be a few seconds because uh, to see Kairens, I don't think it suits Pogaccio because he's like two kilogram heavier. Yeah, let's see. But it's like Pupui de Marie in 2020 yeah. Tour France, but that was after a hard stage and yeah, 13 minutes long. This and also not, not, not quite as steep, I don't think. Uh, it was also re- really steep, but yeah, this yeah. is, I think, more more Roglic, who is more punchier than... Okay, but it's still like nine nine minutes. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not, yeah. not like a m- 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 more de vie. Yeah. Okay, the next one is stage 17, which is the stage that, that's made for probably Pogacar, because there are like 20-minute climbs included. Back yeah, this back is the to... Pogacar stage. This is like the kind of stages that he was dominating the last few years, like similar to the Perisud stage where he yeah, did, did a really good performance and Rokos led him right away because he didn't care about him. And also similar to the stage last year where he put three minutes into the other GC contenders, but there was track standing behind. So yeah, <laughs> it wasn't as, as impressive as we might think it was. Yeah, Pogacar would yeah, I mean, it obviously depends on the race situation. I believe Roglic will be in yellow at this point of the race because ah, I think the Alps really suit him. So Pogacar will probably attack. They can do like the stage before isn't 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 that easy. So yeah, I think they can do around six point six watts per kilogram, which would mean they climb the last climb in around 21, 24, 21 minutes twenty four seconds. And also interesting is that the last 400 meters of this climb are on this like uh, super steep ramp, which is 15% average, oh. where Froome, Froome cracked in 2017 on this, where he lost like 30 seconds to Barde in the last 400 meters and lost yellow as well on the stage. Okay. Sounds interesting. So, yeah, so <laughs> some riders might might just say for the last bit, which could lead to less attacks. Yeah, but it's possible they will save their legs for uh, next stage. Yeah, yeah because the, on the next day there's the most one of the <laughs> most legendary climbs. Because yeah, <laughs> Bjorn Reese in nineteen six <laughs> did like 96. the mo- most most yeah retarded performance in. I think in cycling history, yeah, he still finished. Yeah, this is by this is by far the best performance in cycling history. The uh, Autocam record. And yeah, stage eighteen Reese. will finish on Autocam, which mm-hmm. also will be a pretty hard stage actually. Yeah, I mean they can obviously not get close to to Bjarne Ries record. Like Bjarne Ries also was like on a Uni Puerto stage. Well, this time they have to climb like quite a few hard climbs beforehand the spandels i think the uh which one is which is the climb before yeah i think you're right spandels. obisk 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 as well where erasmussen won and then got disqualified in 27 2007 yeah okay. i think they can do it in around 6 30 maybe 6.3 watts per kilogram around that Seems all right, seems fine to me. Obviously, not as fast as Bjorn Reese because he did this climb at 6.9 watts per kilogram for yeah. 35 minutes. Okay, it's not important. <laughs> for example, the last time they used in Tour de France, this climb was in 2014. The Vincenzo Nibali won, and he he lost uh, almost three minutes to race time. Uh, and Nibali put <laughs> and that was uh, and he put one minute and 11 seconds to second place Thibaut Pinot and Rafael Maika. And that was also like Nibali's best ever performance. Yeah. So that tells quite a lot about how insane this performance is from Rees. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this probably suits Rockledge and Pogaccia equally as well. The climb isn't as steep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maybe Wingard. Uh, he looks good on, on long climbs. 
I think this is probably also a stage where, uh, depending on the race situation, but Jumbo could probably play the one-two game on this climb because the draft benefit is quite substantial still here. Yeah, okay, they will do it also on, on previous stages and they will have many yeah, options. Uh, but, uh, but there's also always an option that someone will get COVID or crash out early. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, they have this like new COVID uh, regulations or whatever it's called now. And <laughs> I, it kind of reads like riders being allowed to race if they don't have symptoms despite having COVID. I, I, I don't fully understand it if it's meant like that, but it doesn't, it, it isn't completely clear. Like, where is it? So you practically can ride even, even if you test uh, wait. for COVID, if you are positive, yes. I have the, I have the, uh, the decision to potentially isolate the case shall be taken collectively by the team doctor concerned, uh, the COVID-19 doc for the event and the UCI medical director on the basis of clinical elements available. I, I, for me, that reads like you can continue the tour if you're test positive. Yeah. Like it doesn't crazy. say, it. yeah, that is crazy. And yeah, I mean, they, they probably did that because they're too too scared of the top stars all leaving due to COVID, I assume. They also removed this like a rule where if two of your team members test positive that you have to race the, uh, leave the race as a team. Okay, and the last important stage where something might happen is stage 20, which is a 40 kilometer time trial, pretty hilly one. Yeah, there are like multiple two kilometer hills at the end. And yeah, I don't know how many minutes Roglic needs to, yeah, before the stage to be comfortable. <laughs> two minutes. Yeah, probably. If he takes two minutes, if, two, uh, if he has two minutes, he's safe. Mm. If he has one minute, he should still win, but you never know. Yeah, you never I, know. Um, I think this is the only part of this route that does not suit Roglic because TD is very long and on stage 20, we've seen that he struggles in the third is not only in 2020, but in 2020, especially when he lost the race, obviously, to Tadej Pogacar. Yeah, this doesn't have this doesn't have a climb like La Planche de Belfi. I don't think he can lose two minutes like he did in 2020. 2018, he also but, yeah. sucked yeah, in the last time for Yeah. <laughs> But in yeah. Volta last year, he, he was fine. But the, 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 there weren't like serious guys. Like Magnus yeah. Kort was second like beat, in that time trial. Beat, yeah, he beat Magnus Kort. Like, it's okay, but it wasn't a super, super crazy performance. On paper, this switch suits Roglic, but not on, on a stage 20, I guess. I'm pretty sure Pogacar will win the stage. Like 80% sure Pogacar will win the stage. But yeah, I think I'm not sure he can take that much on Roglic unless he completely jokes again. I also think Pogacar might win this stage. For example, in 2018, there was a similar stage, hilly one, which was 30 kilometers long. And Roglic in that one lost one minute and 12 seconds to Tom Dumoulin and Chris Room. So yeah, it might be similar yeah, I think, this time. Yeah, I think it might be. I think it might be similar. So Pogacar, Roglic might lose a minute to to Pogac, I don't think he can, even if he chokes out, I don't think he can lose more. So I think his goal will be to get to be one minute 30 ahead. And I mean, if he doesn't choke, he he, he won't be in, in trouble in this TT because he can do these TTs, as we've seen in, for example, the Olympics time trial, where he <laughs> beat everyone by over a minute. Maybe yeah. one of the craziest performance performances in the last few years. Yeah, but the problem is that Pogacar always performs in time trials and tour fronts, which matters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he yeah he's always go, on. Yeah, so. he, he might do like Chris Chris Horner in 2013 Volta, go, go to McDonald's, eat a lot of Big Macs before the important stage. <laughs> and yeah, just destroy Roglic. Yeah, like, yeah, it's like there's like no way. There's like no chance Pogacar chokes. It's just, it's on work late. He, he needs a gap before this DT and he he just he just can't choke again completely. And then he should win this race. Yeah, and that's why that's why I think Yambo will learn from mistakes and they will try to like gain 
time on every stage as possible. Like there yeah. must be a, a hilly or a, a flat stage where there should be a crosswinds and no one is expecting that. And... I think I think yeah, I read something about uh, crosswinds in the like second week somewhere. I don't think the pe people are really expecting it there. I think stage fifteen maybe. Yeah, like uh, maybe. But imagine if it like last year there was stage seven of our water art wonder pool and 30 riders uh, rode away just from UAE who, who was who are trying like full gas. Imagine if in that group would be Jonas and uh, Roglic too. Yeah, and they lose like eight minutes. <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, this is this is the problem for Pogacci because his team is really not good. We haven't talked about it, but Bjerg, Bjerg, Bjerg Lang and Trentin, Soler, Bennett, Micah and McNulty is the team. Yeah. Uh, it's like Lang and uh, Lang and Bjerg, Trentin. They they have nothing on the on the Jumbo rulers, and the mountain support isn't crazy good either. They don't think they can set up significant attacks. McNulty will probably crash up before the mountains. So you need some some predictions. Yeah. Uh, like I think yesterday I wrote on Twitter, Benji Nassen asks, what is your hottest take? My hottest take was no Slovenians and top 10 in this Tour de France in GC, <laughs> which is possible. R like This is the worst take I've ever heard. <laughs> like, yeah, the, the possibility is like less than 1%, but I see it happening. R Roglic crashes out and Pogacar, okay, if Pogacar even, even with COVID would finish with top 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we have in this brief only talked about Wingard, Roglic, and Pogaccia. Maybe mention someone at the start, but like realistically, I don't think I don't think anyone else has over one percent chance of winning this race. In betting I markets, three... I think Garan Thomas was that fourth favorite with like twenty, like with four, yeah, with three, three, four percent chance. Yeah, but Garant is still yeah, heavy. I think, yeah, I, yeah, I I think he's still on ground on nine percent. Yeah, he must be like at his top level. Yeah, I, I only believe maybe Ben O'Connor or Danny Martinez might, or maybe Enric Mas if he's on top form and if he doesn't crash on decent, <laughs> which is very unlikely. <laughs> yeah, because there will be many decent. So, yeah, what is your top five? Oh, top five. Okay, let's look at the odds. If Roglic wins at this point, I will get 3,704 euros. That will probably stack in home. On yeah, I will put even more money on him. And that at that point of the tour, I probably I will yeah, cash out something. But yeah, my top five, let's say the fifth. In the fifth place, will be... We'll fucking finish in fifth place. Let's say Jack Haig. Yeah, Australian. He finished third in the world. I don't, I don't, I don't think Jake can finish top five in the tour at this moment, unless all of the big contenders crash out. I think he's coming well enough. His TT is not good. Yeah, but yeah, he, he, he's he was, good on yeah, long climbs. He wasn't good in. Granol is too steep. He's 70 kilogram. Oh, fuck sake, I don't care. I yeah. have, I have uh, Felipe Martinez fifth. Yeah, I would put him in sixth place probably. Okay, no, he he'll be yeah. yeah but like it's hard to say. It's like so, someone for, for <laughs> like at least one, one big guy will crash out or get COVID, and that will be Danny Martinez. Yeah, that's the problem. I, I, I yeah. bet on Martinez he'll crash out or get COVID. Yeah, uh, no, it's must for me. Yeah, okay. Then the fourth one will be Ben O'Connor, like last yeah, year. Yeah, also. Yeah, I've also been O'Connor fourth. He's climbing really well. I don't think you have to back to the top four this time. Maybe you can even podium if one of the big three yeah, sacrifices him from the Jumbo guys, crashes out or similar. Yeah, okay. Know. Cool. Finish third. Fuck's sake, I didn't want to put Pogacar on podium. Yeah. Let, let's say Danny Martinez will be third and Pogacar will crash out or get COVID or crack and not finish in top 10. Pogacar will finish third. You think he got second and Roglic first. That's my take. I think yeah, Pogacar will. Say, yeah, Wingard second, Ro Roglic first because I put so much money on Roglic. <laughs> <laughs> I think Pogacar will will be behind. Will do some crazy, stupid attack and then get yeah, then it'll backfire and the 
Jumbo Riders will drop him. Yeah, Pogacar. Yeah, I would also probably say third, but uh, let's see. It will be so boring if he gets his third win in a row. Yeah, he's only home and hold. He's 24 or 23. 23, he's only fucking 23, man. Damn. Yeah, but next next year we have Remco to win the race. Oh, come on. Remco can't even win Tour de Suisse against complete bumps. Uh, he didn't get eyes from the team. He will be ready. Yeah. And why, why, why he would receive eyes in Tour de France next year? <laughs> and the quick step is so... In- uh, yeah. Yeah, quick they step is not know. really... Yeah, they- the quick step have no clue how to race the GC. And that is... That's the problem. They need to hire new staff, probably, and new teammates for Remco as well. Yeah, it'll be very difficult to to get into like full GC mode for them. Yeah, the Especially rider... when they will sign Meldiert. Yeah, the rider Big which money. I will which which I will watch closely will be Ruben Guerrero. Yeah, because he he almost he yeah he won on Mont Ventoux Challenge. He put like impressive performance there i think it, it was the th- third best time all time on one two in a road race yeah so i hope he will be yeah, performing well like in dauphine i'm really i'm really interested to see how barde barde will be after after how well he climbed at the start of the Giro, then dnf i mean he won't go for gc i assume but he could win a stage and also, I want to see how Quintana goes because I can't really. Uh, <laughs> I, I really don't, don't know how good he'll be. I, I like. Don't I, have no clue. I don't believe. I think it. he'll finish like eight for nine, probably. Uh, yeah. Let, let's see if anyone can, yeah, challenge Jonas Roglic or Pogacar because in yeah in betting markets <laughs> there are only three three guys who can realistically win Tour of France. Yeah, I hope we have some. Hindley level surprise. 